Good, Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 27th, 2017. It's 9 o'clock. We're in the center hearing room. Courthouse Square, 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem for our weekly Board of Commissioners meeting. We start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So please join. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Nobody has taken advantage, signed up for public comment, so we'll go right to the consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move the consent calendar this morning. First item is to approve an order under Board of Commissioners to approve an order establishing board, committee, and commission assignments for Marion County elected officials. Under Community Services, to approve an order appointing Troy Gregg to the Marion County Children and Families Commission with the term ending June 30th, 2018. Under Community Services, approve an order reappointing Orman Fredericks and changing Commissioner Carlson's status from a regular member to an honorary member to the Marion County Children and Families Commission in turn, with terms ending January 31st, 2022. Okay. Under Health, approve an amendment number one, the contract for services with Youth Move Oregon to add $180,708 from the Willamette, or WVCH Transformation Program Project Grant to provide children and youth crisis services. Also under health, approve a contract for services with Lori Lenton Nelson, RNMN PMHNP for $350,000 to provide psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner services for the Adult Behavioral Health Program through December 31st, 2020. Also under health, approve a contract for services with John Michael Solar for $335,000 to provide psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner services for the Adult Behavioral Health Program through December 31st, 2020. Also under health, approve a contract for services with Dr. Jeffrey Ludi. MD in the amount of $585,000 to provide medical supervision for addiction and treatment services through December 31st, 2020. Under Public Works, receive the notice of the hearings officer decision dismissing conditional use case number 17-033 LEND. Under the tax office, approve an order of a property tax refund in the amount of $37,737.98 to CFT NV Development LLC. I'll second the motion. All right, it's moved and seconded to approve our consent calendar this morning. Any further discussion? I hear none. All in favor then say aye. 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 Motion passes. We have two action items this morning. The first is, oh, you're going to like this one. Consider approval of an order appointing Janet Carlson as chair, Kevin Cameron as vice chair, and Sam Brentano as second vice chair of the Marion County Board of Commissioners. Now, John, your name is on this. Did you want to say something? Uh, uh, Pull your microphone down. You've been here before. Well, I think folks in the audience need to understand that Unlike some boards of commissioners, Marion County Board uh, changes the chair every year. And uh, because this board works so well together, it's uh, not a contested race. Well, and, I... <laughs> <laughs> unless Commissioner Cameron wants to submit a different nomination. Yes. But uh, we do this every year, and I think it's important for people to understand how well coordinated this board is and how they work so well together. Thank you. Thank you, John. Mr. Chair, I will even make the motion, even though it's not my motion to make. I'm so honored to have moving up and have Commissioner Carlson her last year here be the chair. So uh, I will move that. Uh, no, wait a minute. You seem particularly anxious. Is there something I should read into that? Uh huh. Because I asked to make sure this was pulled off the consent calendar because I may have wanted to, you know, do some maneuver. <laughs> I mean, 
but but there was rumors about that, so I'm just. We maneuvered in the past and moved him down a notch. Is that something you <laughs> yeah. want to consider? Right. There was a. There was a I coup. I won't even go into the maneuver <laughs> that happened. There was a coup. I volunteered. I volunteered, to, I volunteered yeah. to let you have a coup. Yeah. Then we can have another coup. Mr. Chair, I'll move that we approve an order appointing Janet Carlson as chair. Kevin Cameron as vice chair and Sam Bertano as second vice chair for the Marion County Board of Commissioners. And I will second the motion with the addition that to John's explanation that we rotate the chair every year. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the order. Can I sum it up? Well. Well, I'll just read it. <laughs> Appointing Janet Carlson chair, Kevin Cameron as vice chair, Sam Brentano second vice chair, Marion County Board of Commissioners, it should say for 2018. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, right. any further discussion? I don't hear any, Looking so forward to it. I'll call a question. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. So you'll have a special wow. year. I sure hope so. <laughs> okay. The next item is under public works, consider a resolution initiating amendments, Marion C County Code Title 17, the Rural Zone Code adopting criteria and standards regulating the siting, siting of photovoltaic solar arrays in certain zones. Brandon Reich is here. Brandon, if you're ready, go ahead. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, Brandon Reich, staff representing the Planning Division of Public Works. Since 2015, Marion County Planning has received a number of applications for photovoltaic solar power generation facilities on farmland in the county. There have been concerns raised about allowing these facilities on productive farmland. At a recent work session, the board directed staff to prepare a resolution initiating consideration of amendments to the Rural Zone Code related to the criteria and standards for placement of photovoltaic solar power generation facilities on farmland. Before you today is that resolution to initiate that consideration and it further directs staff to work with the Marion County Planning Commission to develop a recommendation for the board to consider. Joe Finnamore will be the planner working with you on this project. Um, he's out of the office this week and so I'm, I'm helping out here. Um, staff recommends the board adopt the resolution as provided and with that I'm available for any questions you may have. Questions. Go ahead. So, Brandon, thank you for bringing this forward, and I realize you're the messenger here today. So, uh, when did the Oregon state law and administrative rules on this become uh, enacted? Do you remember? We'll have to review. So, the county changed the way it handled power generation facilities in 2011. Before that, we were more restrictive, and we said no power generation facilities on farmland, regardless of the size. In 2011, we changed to match the same as state law had, which was 12 acres for high value, 20 acres for non-high value, and then there's another, another category, I forget at the moment what that is. Then after 2011, the state revised the rules for how photovoltaic can go on farmland. They added a number of criteria into the administrative rule and we adopted that into our code between 2011 and, and 20, 2015. So it's changed over time in a couple of ways and there's some options. It's a conditional use in the zone and as a conditional use, the county has a lot more flexibility to look at how to apply that use appropriately in the county. Okay, so, um, I'm trying to, so the way that I understood it was that uh, these solar farms that we've been looking at, that this is a relatively new kind of a mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah. So when we were looking at changing the photovoltaic solar arrays <laughs> or whatever in 2011, my recollection was it was like a single kind of a windmill thing where people could create electricity for their farm, right? As opposed to putting solar farms on solar property. Can you kind of help me mm -hmm. distinguish between those two? Because it seems like we got these uh, requests to do these solar farms, which then caused a whole lot of public outcry. And uh, 
That seems like it's new and different from what we had talked about in the past. So I just kind of want to understand that. Sure. People on their on their property, either for personal use on a residence or with a farm, they can do power generation for their own property's use. And um, it's a kind of a net metering agreement. Whatever they generate in excess goes back to the power company, and they can offset their own production costs through solar, like on the roof, or, or small ground mount, through wind, um, uh, water generation, water turbine. And that's been, we've done that for quite a while, and that's not a power generating facility. It's not for commercial power, just personal use, and it's just accessory to that use. These, these are larger facilities that generate power as on a commercial basis that goes back into the grid. And I think they've been coming forward for a combination of reasons. There are, there are um, tax reasons at the companies in that, that produce these that make the photovoltaic um, profitable for them. And that's been more recent um, in the last few years. And so, and that's continued, been renewed, and so they've continued to do these photovoltaics. A number of these were done in Eastern Oregon in years past, big, big facilities. And what these companies have found is it's still profitable to do smaller ones locally here nearer where the power consumption is because the power lines and the substations and things that are needed are smaller. So it becomes more profitable to even do a 12 acre site on the west side as opposed to the east side. All the reasons that we've gotten these more recently, I don't know. It's a, it's a combination of the tax credits, the um, the way the county changed the ordinance after 2011 um, to allow facilities on up to a maximum 12 acres. And probably on their end, the, the difference from moving Eastern Oregon to Western Oregon and making it more, being able to make it profitable still with smaller facilities. And just in 2011, I'm just not recalling that, having that in-depth discussion. How did that, did that come forward? We hadn't had to my recollection, we, I think we had one power generation facility, I think it was natural gas proposed near Turner years ago. Um, we, we required a goal exception at that time and such, it, it was outside the city. We did have a person interested in doing a power generation facility out near Kaiser that was a combination of, of agriculture and, uh, and uh, gen heat generation to, to drive a turbine. And because at the time the county had preclusion on power generation on high value farmland, that gentleman um, was not able to even apply without going through a goal exception process. So to provide that means to be able to apply for up to 12 acres for all variety of power generation, whether it's solar or wind or any, any number of, of generation, the county amended in 2011, the code to match what the state had okay. for the requirement. All right. So it was kind of a low profile, it wouldn't be something where like a million people came and it was it wasn't controversial, it was... It, it wasn't, and at that time, I don't think we were expecting 12-acre sites to be really profitable, and things have changed, the cost of producing uh -huh. okay. solar, and the cost of the power, the, the component costs have changed, and so now we're seeing quite a few sites. Right. And the state made some rules that, that these sites can go within, they, they have, the density of the sites can be within a mile of each other, so it's, it's kind of a simplified way of looking at the way they calculate the density. And a mile apart is actually quite a few sites on high value farmland across across our area. So yeah. the state amend, developed those rules later, and um, actually allowed a, quite a bit of density being a mile apart. Uh -huh. All right, thank you. Just because I'm thinking of it, didn't we have some proposal like on Battle Creek that was withdrawn? In my memory, we started to look at one, and then we never made a decision on it. We had one that was related to generating, driving a turbine with steam power. Uh, this was solar, I'm thinking, Brandon. Okay, but I don't remember that one. All right, it doesn't matter. Did you have something? Uh, Mr. Chair, just, I know we've, we've talked about this, and I appreciate this, this uh, resolution is going to kick this over to our planning commission to start to look at this in more detail. But I just, I, I think I mentioned this in a work session, that I just find it ironic that we, we will... Never mind, I'm not going to say it. We just need to get a handle on this because we're, we're putting these things in places where high value farmland is, you know, Marion County's number one farm gate. We need to do things to protect it, yet, this we're letting it go for these reasons. And uh, there's a lot of other ways, places we could put these things. So okay. I'm glad we're doing this. Uh, appreciate Brandon, you, and Joe, and all the work that you've been doing to get this thing. Um, 
And I'll just use this one example. When you drive up I-5, uh, you look to the right just before, I think, Woodburn. There's a, there's a solar, I'm not going to say it, Commissioner Carlson, like you did, Vitaic, solar Vitaic field. Uh, solar field there, and yet there's right beside it a little corner of property that we could have put it on, and we chopped up this big field. Somebody did. I, I, we just need to have some common sense as we, as we do this. And, and yet we're not allowed to put a house there, but we can, put, we can take all this stuff out of uh, production to put solar fields on it. So anyways, I'm glad we're doing this. If I could add in, I'm just, I think just like you, I've been, I'm for the idea, I'm for the solar generation, but it's such a perfect opportunity to, to use property that we've been hearing about forever. You know, the, the ground that's too rocky to, to farm and you can't build a house on it, that's perfect, but not, not prime farmland. That isn't where it belongs. So uh, I'm hoping that the uh, Planning Commission will, and all of us will come up with something that does that puts it where it needs, can go without destroying farmland. All right, I need a motion and we'll Yeah, I'll make the motion. I've got one more question for Brandon though. So if we get any new applications, are they kind of stayed as we work through this process or what's the- Under the land and use- And kind of how long will it take for us to go through this? They're able to apply under the current code until the county changes the code. Then there'll be new criteria or new standards for them to apply. Um, we don't have the ability to stay in application as long as it's in, in place in the code until okay, that so changes. Okay, so how long will this take? I, I don't know what Joe has worked out for a timeline. I know he's going to the Planning Commission. I believe that that's a um, Planning Commission recommendation without a hearing, and then it'll come before the board. Um, I will let Joe know that you're interested in proceeding with this yeah. quickly. Do you have a, a date or month in I'm not interested in entertaining time? any more applications until we get the rules in place. So. I don't want to see but, a big rush in between either. Right. Well, Mr. Mr. Chair, may I? Sure. So just a comment, Brandon. The planning director has the ability to approve or disapprove of these now, correct? Correct. Based on the criteria that are in the code. Okay. All right. That, but the board could immediately call up anything, right? The board could. All right. Okay. Just so you know that and you know what, how we're thinking. All right. Okay. So I would move that the board uh, adopt this resolution initiating amendments to the Marion County Code, Title 17, Rural Zone Code, adopting standards, criteria and standards, regulating the siting of photovoltaic solar arrays in certain zones, and also referring the matter to the planning, Marion County Planning Commission for recommendation. I'll second the motion. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve a resolution, resolution that uh, initiates amendments to the Marion County Code Title 17. All right. Any further discussion? I think we've covered it. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you. Yeah, quickly, Brad. Pass that along. Okay, no public hearing today. That's the end of our action items. The last is to read the places we'll be together in the coming week. Today at 12.30 till 3, we have Marion County Housing Authority interviews. That'll be in the Mount Angel Conference Room, 5th floor, 555 Court Street, Northeast Salem. And, and then from 3 to 4, one that's put off, and I've got to catch up on where we are, but it's got a uh, construction projects update, Silver Conference Room, 5th floor. Thursday, 1 o'clock to 2, a work session having to do with broadband. Again, the Silverton Conference Room. Closed for New Year's Day. Huh? It's interesting. On the 2nd, we come back with a work session with the City of Staten having to do with the Wilkel Area Development Challenges. That'll be in the Silverton Conference Room. That's followed at 10 o'clock by Calendar Review, also Silverton Conference Room. And then 1.30 to 2.30, a law enforcement assisted diversion work group. Again, the Silverton Conference Room. And that's followed at 2.30 by county council interviews as we look for our new uh, lead county attorney. That's 2.30 to 5.30, Silverton Conference Room. Next Wednesday, 9 o'clock, is our next board session here in the center hearing room on the first floor, 555 Court Street in Salem. That's followed at noon to one, uh, Woodburn meeting, uh, Woodburn-Marion County meeting, Luis's 
Taqueria, 523 Front Street in Woodburn. And then on the way back, we're gonna stop at Mont Angel for a tour of a gym equipment. 2150 Progress Way, Woodburn. Um, I think that'll be kind of interesting. I hope you both, I don't, I don't think you're planning on going, Commissioner, but it, it's worth seeing. It's been doing great things there. All right, anything else to talk about this morning? John, you hiding something from us? Boys. Dang it. Huh? Anything else? <laughs> what? All right. If you feel that way, let's call this, this is our last. This is our last session for this year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Been a good year. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.